Roy here. Hey, I've got a, I think a, a kind of a fun afternoon planned and I had this idea. I, I, first I want to introduce you to Bob and Susie. And um, Bob and Susie are working with us now as part of our garden care crew at Northwind. And I thought, boy, I, I'd like to introduce Bob and Susie to you. So you have such unique stories about finding a way and becoming, uh, becoming a gardener. And not, not just a, you know, a gardener that we all can be, but professional gardening. Looking at plants and involving yourself in relationships with plants in a more intimate way and understanding how they grow into each other and how to become uh, involved in that relationship and, be, and become a gardener. And I met Bob, when did I, I mean, you were in my class. Yeah, I was um, going to college at DuPage and I had retired from my civilian job and uh, always had an interest in gardening and decided, well, I'm gonna go back to school. I had a perfect opportunity to do it. So mm -hmm. I went back for a horticulture degree, but then I also fell into looking at certificates in different areas. And one was sustainable landscape. And you had two courses that were in that, perennial plant communities one and plant, perennial plant communities two. And uh, I was, um, I actually heard about you before I actually got in the class in my quote perennials class because other students had already taken you and they were just very uh, excited with what you had to say there, so. Yeah, I remember you in class, I remember, uh, yeah, it, it is a fun class too. I think we had a good time with it. Yeah, yeah, and then I, I remember you brought plants the first day I never had an instructor that brought plants, and it was a particular sedge, and how you talked about it was just um, really remarkable, I thought, from an instructor, and it really just caught my attention um, more in the sustainable landscape and, and to be not, get more knowledgeable about sedges. So, mm -hmm. so that just sort of was a, a, a driving force there. And then after the class, you stayed in touch? And yes. He, he... Yeah, I remember, I don't know if it was in perennial plant one or two, but you had offered the class, if you came up to North when you'd give us a tray of perennials. And I'm thinking, well, my wife and I have a place in East Troy, so I figured that we would come up anyhow. So I came up and I, I met you. I think I surprised you mm -hmm. that I came up I there. Always surprised when people take me up on something I say. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> so, Usually, you yeah, okay, Roy, and I never see him again. Yeah, and it, and it was it was in April. I remember that because it snowed the weekend before or so, and there was still snow on the ground there. But you you went around with a tray and you pulled out certain plants, and I meticulously planted those and watched them. And you know, Spirobolus, um, you know, the uh, the stakies, and a number of them that you know are more. Well, that was the purpose of my offering it to the class. Yeah. Was the whole the whole idea of is 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 that self discovery of the plant. Discover yes. the plants for yourself so you understand how they live and grow together. And when you mm -hmm. see them from youth to maturity, you learn so much. Oh, I did, yeah. I did, and um, that just sort of really hooked me on really pursuing more of the sustainable landscape type of uh, environment there. And then and then since then, I'd like to try to get more into the design aspect. So I really follow your lead and try to sort of see where you're going with them. Plus I'm reading and I follow other people too. So. Well, I think through the class we're sharing too that the, val the, the value of design is when you know the plants, you have to design right. them so they can be cared for right. with the capability of care. And then you understand how to care for things by doing it. And I think that then you came to Northwind and said, you know, I want to I want to learn to garden. I did, and, yes. And, and get exposed to all these other plants that yeah. I've never really worked in mm -hmm. my own garden. Right. So. So I think Susie, Susie was unique. As I, I, how did we meet? It wasn't a class. It was, uh, no. you showed up. Yes. I think, well, I heard you talk on the radio. <laughs> and you said some things that I really connected to. Larry Mueller show. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I had, I had been listening to the podcast, and I would listen to a little bit at a time, you know, while I was doing dishes or whatever at home. Um, I go back and re-listen and, and just kind of kind of work my way through that episode. Mm -hmm. But there were a lot of things that, you know, you talked about, you know, these desperate single plants in a field of wood chips trying to, to make it. 
And I, well, I had, that's, that has bothered me my whole life, you know, walking through a parking lot or a store, and I, I just, you know, <laughs> it's new, and it, it looks nice maybe the first year, and then pretty soon they, you know, the, the wood yeah. chips wear away, and you see the irrigation line, and that plant doesn't look so good, and there's nothing else around it, and yeah, it really bothered me, but, but then he talked about that, and, and I, you know, in my own yard too, I think I had, you know, for a long time collected plants. I have, you know, one, one of these, mm -hmm. one of those, it, you know, and I liked, I was drawn to the design or the, you know, the flower or the leaves or, you know, whatever it was. And, but then, you know, seeing, thinking, I don't know, there's a shift, <laughs> you yeah. know, seeing the plants as <coughs> a community. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, it's, I think when you, you're sensing it, they're missing relationships, mm -hmm. they're missing something is missing mm -hmm. with the plants that you've harvested or collected in a way mm -hmm. based on an emotional moment. Yeah. And you mm -hmm. said, you know what, they're not, they, we don't seem to see good relationships here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just a feeling because you're alive. Yeah. I think when you know, like when you saw the plants not healthy and the irrigation line exposed mm -hmm. and the plants declining, you just sense that. Something is not going well mm -hmm. here for this planting, and that that's a. Uh, I, I, I think that we're, it's called making distinctions. We're starting to make distinctions between things, and when you can see mm -hmm. one thing and another and have a distinction, yeah. and Anna Maria shared this with me. When you do see distinctions, your creativity level rises, because now you know one thing from another. So now you, if you understand how one thing can live and work with another, mm -hmm. because the differences you understand how they can be put together in a relationship, you become more creative and more understanding of how that works. So how did you show up at Northwind again then? Well, you know, you invited people to come, yeah. come and see you. So I, I think I, I went once and I walked through your gardens and you know, you're... I remember that and you were, I was there when you were... Well, that was the second time. Oh, okay. So I, I went yeah. once and then I brought my husband okay. <laughs> and then that's when I ran into you, but I just, it was like I couldn't get enough of, you know, snapping photos and looking, you know, what's what's over here? What is this? You know, so many plants that I wasn't familiar with mm -hmm. growing in different ways and just, you know, getting impressions from a whole panorama yeah. versus yeah. looking emotional. at one thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you asked me, this is what I, I'm standing uh -huh. here and I come and garden here. And was that it, or what did well, you say? You wanted to be a gardener? You know, how, how does, is it possible for me, you know, to walk into that career? Or how, yeah. how, do, you, how do you even do that? Because <laughs> I think, you know, for me, when I'm, when I'm in my yard and I start looking around and I start seeing things to do, that's the one thing that I could do and not stop doing. You know, I, I don't get tired of being out there. I love it. <laughs> you have an art or? Yeah, fine arts degree. Um, you know, I, ma I majored in painting, but I, you know, I also love drawing. And I had worked as an artist in a retail situation, but, and, you know, I've kind of transitioned out of that. Um, so, so it's kind of like, what's, what's next? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, that, and that's kind of my puzzle now. You know, how does, what I was doing there, you know, how does that two-dimensional visual thing relate to the garden? Because that, you know, the, to me, the garden just seems like it seems like it's a symphony, you know, over the. Oh, well, it's it's a more it's, a different it's, thing. it's constant dynamics. <laughs> yeah. a, a painting is something to me. It's finished. It's done. It's not going to change mm -hmm. overnight and become broader and more colorful. Or mm -hmm. when the painting or sculpture is done, it's kind of that sculpture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you plant a garden, it's continuous dynamics and changing, constantly changing relationships from moment to moment. Yeah. So you really have to interpret not just the beginning of it, but you have to interpret its entire life as it moves yeah. forward. And that's what a gardener yeah. does. And then this was good. And you asked me that question. And I mm -hmm. said, well, just come out. If you want to come out on Sundays, did I invite you mm -hmm. out on Sunday? Just come out and start weeding. And, mm -hmm. I, and she, and uh, you came out on Sundays and started weeding with the Dutch hole and asking a million questions about everything. And we did some garden renovation. Was it two years you did yeah. that or was it one year before? It was one, yeah, one, 
one year. Yeah, and then. And then it's about the same time. Bob yeah, yeah. I, think, I think it was the same year. I was on Saturday. <laughs> And, but uh, I never and you were there too, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I never went <laughs> yeah. too. Oh, you were Sunday. Was, yeah, it was yeah. Sunday. Yeah. I was there. And Bob came out on Saturdays to yeah. garden. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, yeah, that was right. It was the same year. Yeah, yeah, because I, I didn't even know you had somebody else on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and so that first experience you had, because you knew you had discovered something mm -hmm. for both yourself, what was it about the gardening on Saturday and Sunday that? Kept you moving forward and not saying, why am I working for free for this guy? I should be home. I can be watching Andy and Mayberry or something. Or You know, I, you had, know. A, I had a conversation with one of the ladies that work in retail. Um, and um, and she had looks at it the same way, that it's just a magical feeling when you look at your creations in your garden with the texture, the color. The, the variations it's just inspiring mm -hmm. this is just just wonderful oh, so, so 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 it was just a, a great you know well, it's not like you're working when you're working in something you really like to see all the time you you're learning and it came from your own passion too of yeah what you're trying to make for yourself yeah to, you're to, to, to yourself see that into, type yeah. of dynamics yeah. with something i can yeah, i can get that because yeah. I, I volunteered yeah. at the morton arboretum in the 80s mm -hmm. and i actually couldn't wait for Tuesday nights to go to the Arboretum Prairie and meet, sit there, talk to Ray Schulenberg and, and learn. And what I put on one Tuesday for almost all summer, I laid bricks through the Arboretum Prairie. We put the whole brick walkway in. Ah, and it was wow. the best time I ever had. And I did it with a guy that's changed tires for a living. So he and I just put, but that was that excitement yeah. <clears throat> of doing that. And I think the same on you on a Sunday, you just, just you showed up. Yeah, you were there, <clears throat> and yeah, I, I I think I never well. On those initial visits, I felt, you know, like I, <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to start working in there. I wanted to right. be in there. I don't know well, what I, it was. <laughs> I have to say it from both. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. What, what, what was the initial feeling that hmm. made you? want to continue forward what, what just, was there a joy well because it's hard to explain to people and all of people well, out there, you know too. when we were well when i was there on saturday i was doing weeding and then you gave me certain gardens well, yeah, so yeah, you can name, garden. <laughs> name it after myself so i took some ownership of that um but i didn't have the dynamic experience that the crew that goes out from the spring through the fall as I'm learning the whole gardening event, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and it's, it's the bulbs in the springtime and understanding what kind of bulbs you use and patterns and aggression of different bulbs and, and whether some of these are going to lead to seedlings that you just don't want because it's a, it's a, a challenge afterwards there. And it's, it's, it's all of that, mm -hmm. you know, going then to the cutting, you know, the, the spring with the bulbs to the early spring when your the weeds are most aggressive at that time there to the time where it gets a little bit more less aggressive in midsummer where we're, we're looking at more of how can we enhance the garden as you would say it there and we start looking at it in a different way how you know it's missing something there and then going to the fall to actually cutting down the garden there for the one for the customers that don't want them up through the, yeah, the winter time for right and they, that, for, when we cut it down in the fall, we have an advantage over spring, not having to go back in the spring and cut it back right. down. And, and then in the fall, the whole <clears> the <throat> dynamics of planting more bulbs. We planted some right, right. in the summertime, some of the summer ones there, but then we're planting a, a whole slew of ones in, yeah. in the so fall. It seems like a big characteristic is, and it's in almost everything humans do, is curiosity. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have your yeah. curiosity mm -hmm. about what's the next leaf going to be, what's the next pattern going to look like. Yeah, I think that seeing that progression was really important to me. Like you know, being I, in yeah. a place where I'm not I'm not familiar with these plants, or I sort of am, but <laughs> knowing like seeing you know not just from a seed catalog, not just seeing that one shot, but oh, yeah. seeing yeah. you know through the the it's whole not like year a, a picture in a magazine. Yeah, right. yeah. You don't know 
a day later what that changes, and you didn't know a day before what it was. You mm -hmm. just see the picture in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, a lot of people get caught up in that. They see a beautiful moment. One. Yeah. When you see a beautiful moment in the magazine, you have no idea how that got there. Mm -hmm. There's no description of how that became that in the magazine article, and there's no description of how it's cared for and loved in the magazine article. Mm -hmm. So you really don't yeah. know how did that get to be that moment, but you do know that it had to be cared and loved for and had to have thought, but no one's sharing how that happens. So mm -hmm. that's that part we have to wander through, and like you're doing, discovering that on your own. Keep, yeah. Keep, keep more. So this was the best part after that, the two years you both worked at Northwind, Bob's Garden, and you did around the Pyramid Garden. <laughs> the following year, I think I asked if you'd want to work on the garden care crew a couple days a week. Yes. And, yeah. and you met last year then? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, oh, okay. in the spring of last year. Yeah. yeah. So okay. last year they became uh, part of our garden care team and actually mm -hmm. went out to uh, a number of homes yeah. together yeah, yeah. and started yeah. doing uh, gar garden care, professional garden care. So what did you discover at the residential site that went beyond what you saw at Northwind for yourself? Well, it was exposure to different designs, different plants, um, you know, and I know a lot of that's based upon the customers that you're doing the design mm -hmm. for. So it's just really, really seeing the differences between, you know, different plant communities that you've created. And, and for me, just learning from that, watching them, as we talked earlier, from the spring to the fall and how textures change, colors change and how they interact. And I have to say, you're saying that some, when some people, if people that would be walking around seeing you or you or myself hoeing, mm -hmm. they think, oh, those poor people. That's all they do is push a hoe all day. You know, and, and I look, you know, like when you're pushing a hoe, you're within a relationship that's constantly changing. You're not really, mm -hmm. you're hoeing, but you're, for me, it's walking, it's hoeing through that garden, looking at every relationship changing. What am I going to be thinking about with each plant? Mm. So I'm very involved with the planting as I push the hoe. The hoe is a way for me to pause and work mm -hmm. my way through the planting. If I didn't have the hoe for me, I'd walk by the garden and my mind might not be focused on the garden as much because I might be thinking about the phone call I have to make or something. Mm -hmm. So I kind of feel sorry for the people that think I'm just out there as a laborer. Yeah. And they don't know the joy that we're having as gardeners. Yeah. You know? you're, you're in the thick of things when you're out there weeding yeah, and right. really observing the plants. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're looking at the competitive nature of the plants you've put in. Is that something you discovered too? How do you feel about it? What do you feel when you're hoeing? Well, I feel part of the, the landscape when I'm hoeing, just like we talked about. I mean, you get to really get up and get up close with plants to see, you know, um, how they're growing. And then, you know, you, you see how communities work together on where weeding is more of a problem and where weeding is not as much yeah. of a problem. Mm -hmm. And then you can have some insight into maybe I need to move a plant or change a plant or input, have a plant put into the hole is too big for too long and the weed mm -hmm. competition's too high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, so hoeing always. And how did you feel when I introduced you to the Dutch push pull hole? It was different. <laughs> It was different. I, I, I like the fact that it was so long that you didn't have to bend over on it. Right, that's my way. And, uh, you know, it, it's sort of multifaceted. I know we would use it to really aggressively work mm -hmm. at some turf grass that would get into uh, a flower bed or a garden area there, you know, using it in a, in a certain way. So it, it was multifaceted, mm -hmm. I thought, and you learn it by using it. And that was the first yeah. time you saw it, too, wasn't it, when I introduced it? No, you? actually, yeah. my... My in-laws, thank you, <laughs> gave me one a few years ago. Oh, they ago. did. Oh, good for they them. Might, they yeah. might have purchased it from yeah. me. Yeah. But, they, but I, oh, I had been using it in my garden, and it it's, yeah, makes things a lot easier. <laughs> and the first time they, yeah. when they gave it to you, mm -hmm. it's a curious tool. It is. Because it's so long. And I and think it. I didn't use it right away because I, di I didn't really understand it. Right, right. But when I did, it, you know, it, mm -hmm. it speeds things up well, a lot. I have to say when I brought when I brought it back from Holland, when the guy showed it to the, our staff, yeah. they all grabbed it low like it was an American pull hole. I said, uh, no, you put your hand on the mm -hmm. top and you stand up straight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They immediately grabbed it just like they would grab a, 
push pull hole in America. Yeah, they even, went, even though it was that long. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't instinctive to, and then when they discovered that, oh my gosh, they never wanted to give that hole up because they could stand upright and move through the garden at a much easier pace. Yeah, no, I have to say after a year of really using it quite a bit last year, you really develop a good technique on how to use it. You learn to right. use it right. Much like, like playing uh, trombone. Yeah. You know, right away you get a trombone, it's not, you're not out there as yeah. playing <laughs> musical. You have to learn to understand and appreciate it. So it is sure. a, it's a tool. Yeah. And, it's a, and it, I think it adds, to me it's always, it's added tremendous value to what I can do as a gardener. Because mm -hmm. not having to crawl on the ground, <laughs> it's a big blessing for me yeah. just to be able mm -hmm. to stand up right. So what were some of the like, big discoveries last year? Anything major that you saw out in, in private gardens, going from home to home? Um, well, my big discovery is just sort of, again, seeing your, your pattern. I know we talked about, I mentioned briefly with Susie that you've got various patterns on the Fontana Boulevard there. And each of them a little bit different there. And there's a few of them that just really caught my attention there. I really like the use of grasses and the textures with perennial mm -hmm. plants there too. And it, it, it takes the void up when you have less flowering and just, just adds a, a, a certain dynamic to a design. So Any grasses you've discovered recently that you weren't aware of that we've used more off-site than you saw at the nursery? Any, um, any probably plant? the millennia. I, um, haven't, I wasn't as familiar with the sprawlus I was because that's one of the cl uh, plants that you, one of my ones I really like, and I think it might be even being overused a little bit, is the Cesslaria automalis there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I really like the limish color, and I've learned that if you put that in too much shade, it's not going to turn to lime of color. It's going to be more green mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. so I, I definitely discovered that there. And what you've created, I go back to that distinction. Now you have a distinction of the distinction of how it lives from sun to shade, mm -hmm. and that makes you more creative with it as a designer. Right. But but it, and it does well in shade though. Yeah, it just doesn't that. have that color right. change. Mm -hmm. It's just something to be aware of. Here, so. How about any plants that you discovered through or planting styles or anything? Well, in the la last year going into this year. <laughs> you got me on the spot. <laughs> I was, well, I was going to say you know the like the Cesslaria autumnalis, I, yeah, that one, and then uh, Carex Montana. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I, well, <laughs> it's not gonna come to me now. I'll think, I'll think of a lot of things mm -hmm. tonight. <laughs> I'm sure oh, that's that. okay. But you can, we'll have an, our next show, we'll go into yeah. some of the things. But I, I, I think, you know, that stretch um, in front of the beach on the Fontana Boulevards, it just felt, Kind of glorious to me over the fall so i i think yeah a lot of that was i don't know if it's the grasses in there or you know the amsonia is just the the textures and the different contrasts or subtle subtler, subtle color shifts in yeah. there so this we're year as we st we're starting now we're cutting and clean our bob mm -hmm. bob was mowing today yes mm -hmm. and <laughs> you were cutting back at someone's house too mm -hmm. cutting and we and leaving the the debris, I say debris, but we're changing, we're, it's, it's leaf and stem fall. Right. Debris is a negative phrase, so yeah. I'm trying to get away from saying plant debris. <clears throat> but I was just sharing with people that all, every plant that's ever lived on earth, they've all been self-mulching. They're, they're self-mulching systems. It's not like you have to bring the mulch in. Right. So, but this year, as we move into garden care, and after last year, what kind of things are you looking to grow into? What kind of a, what's your new dis not your new discoveries, but what do you see yourself paying more attention to this year for yourself for yourself to grow as a gardener? Well, you know, focusing on design aspects, but, you know, I want to learn more about uh, Carex sedges there. You, you've got a vast knowledge and I ask you all the time, but, I, you know, it's the difference between this clump variety that does well in shade, but it has to be moist there and a clump variety that does well in shade but can handle dry. Which there. is today we were engaged with uh, Ramona, Eric right. Ramona. You right. asked me about Eric Ramona. Asking, and, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, because I've been to this site a few times that it is irrigated. So it's more likely not something that's going to be the one that's going to be drought tolerant. 
Mm-hmm. And, and and unfortunately, I know more about those than I do about mm-hmm. the ones that are require more of the wet uh, nature yeah. there. So, but but I'm you know I'm learning about the grass. I really again it's such a um, an area that I really think is necessary in design. It adds such a dimension with the texture there. And we use the distancia there. Well, that's a wetter, it's a little bit wetter area. Handle shade, handle sun, sun. So you know, I'm 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 really learning them as well as seeing them. I need, you need to see them to really understand them, and that's that's I want to get get a little bit better on understanding. Yeah. Yeah. I mentioned that in one of my other YouTube shows. I mean, there's a difference between having an awareness of something mm-hmm. and coming to know something. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned that before. I think why I was joking around. I said I have an awareness of Saturn, but I don't know anything about it. Right. But when you, so when you have an awareness of a plant, that's a beginning. But you have to come to know it, it's like a friend. Mm-hmm. You have to know it to understand how to use it and how it can be put right. into play. So I, and then uh, I think well, what about um, summertime? I think one thing I've always noticed is the, the the change of pace of the gar- of being a gardener in the summer oh. because of the change in weed competition. Is the plants are so yeah. thick. True. You've, you've got this different way of a, working into the garden as the plant's density increases. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, there's a couple of, um, I know there was the one challenging garden that was actually out there today that Susie and I had the uh, privilege of <laughs> yeah. weeding first time last year, and it has a real clover problem. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. and um, was quite a challenge, but you know, it was spring, early spring, so the plants weren't quite mature. So, um, unfortunately, the owner didn't aggressively take care of it early on. So it's become more of a problem. They let, uh, mm-hmm. let a small smoldering fire turn into yeah. a fire. Yeah. So, but it, as the season progressed, you know, that got under control. The plants matured, shaded areas more to prevent new seeds from coming up. Um, so it's learning those dynamics of. You know, the aggressive plants, and you know, I think most of us know that it's very aggressive in the spring for the plants, but it's neat to see how the plants sort of, the, the ornamental plants take over and shade the area. You mm-hmm. don't have to worry about it as yeah. much. as the reduction yeah. of light energy, yeah. less weed competition. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. right. And you look at the health of the plants as they, as, as long as everyone can fairly share a light, mm-hmm. things can maintain a healthy course. Right, mm-hmm. right, right. So. Why? Well, this has been a nice conversation. I've enjoyed this because it helps me understand that that uh, I think we're going in a, in a good direction. Yeah, uh, looking at gardening as something that can be a healthy profession, actually. And I'm always going to be curious to see what you do next because mm-hmm. you you have such pursuit of where you want to be. I'm, I'm very excited about that mm-hmm. so much. So Susie, Bob. Thanks, thanks everybody out there for giving us a chance to share with you, and we'll see you next time.